Hello everyone and welcome to another module in the School of Biomechanics and I am very excited to share with you what feels like another incredibly valuable rite of passage um, <laughs> going down the rabbit hole of biomechanics going through all the modern systems and all the older systems I'm surprised it took me so long to finally get to this it <laughs> always looking to simplify and I feel like I've found something that's even simpler less equipment and more profound possibly equally so at least than the other modules I've shared so far and that is muscle control where we're going to work on our mind muscle connection so why muscle control well it feels obvious in saying it but until I discovered it and explored it and experienced it for myself it wasn't obvious so it's always hindsight it's 2020 but of course when it comes to movement, we should be able to control our muscles, right? Well, that's what most of us do to a degree. But what I've been doing, and I think many of us for the most part, is the only way I can, the metaphor that comes to me is button bashing. When, you, when you're when you playing a video game and you just don't know the controls and you just hit the buttons within an area, you know, roughly that's kick or that's punch, you know, if you're playing a street fighter or something like that, you know, those two are kick, those two are punch and you just bash the buttons, whatever kind of rough thing you want to do. But the body can be similar to that, I think, but, uh, but we can also be much more precise in our control. And I think so far, when it comes to movement, we go, oh, I want to lift my arm, I want to throw a ball, and we just kind of mimic. We've done a lot of mimicry, but not actually that internal focus of what muscle should control, control the motion. Now, it's not going to get as complicated as, you know, segmented out the throw, but just in terms of, being able to activate a muscle while other muscles around it don't activate. So let, let's give an example here, right? If I ask you to, to tense your bicep, right? We squeeze the bicep. Many of us will probably squeeze the bicep, but we'll also squeeze the shoulder and maybe even the back of the arm as well. We'll, we'll tense and squeeze and everything will get there. But you can also squeeze the bicep and relax the shoulder and relax the tricep. And this is where we're going from this button bashing of just you know, activate the muscle, I'm gonna do a squat, let me just squeeze my legs and go up to the precise, okay, what, should this be my thighs working right now or should it be my glutes or my hamstrings? So we're gonna get much more precise into these muscles and the more we can do this in, in the, what these teachers that I've been digging into claim and in my experience so far, the more we can use the muscle that's meant to do the job contractually and also relax the muscles in the opposite direction. So with the arm example I gave, the bicep and the tricep, the more I can use my bicep and relax the tricep, the more I'm able to maximize this and I'm not fighting against my tricep to contract the bicep. So this applies all over the body. So the more we can just practice in sort of isolation, the mechanical movements of, you know, pulling something in or pushing something away and what muscles should be working while relaxing the other muscles, well, this is a big part of muscle control and this is a big part of learning to control our body in a very precise manner. What this allows us to do is to be efficient with the muscles, uh, to conserve energy rather than wasting energy in contracting the antagonist muscle and wasting energy in the fight that we're having to do against the antagonist muscle. So it's a, a double win, basically. So that's the why, in theory, why we're going to do this. Now, if that's got you intrigued and you want to keep going ahead, then let me share a bit of the how. So like probably many people here, and I've said it probably every module, I've dug into many different systems, loads of the new age modern fringe systems. Well, for this one, I, I wanted to, this module was going to be strength, right? So I went right back to the start of kind of modern strength training, and I went through a William Blakey program, and that led me to discover Eugene Sandow, which some of you may have actually heard of, and his system of training, and then also the Max Alding system of training. So these are two systems from a hundred plus years ago there's an approach that i feel when i read this content and do my research around these subjects and and their approach and systems to the body that is simplistic but in a, a way that aligns with nature and an organic way that just really is not over complicated and it's not loads of machinery and equipment and it's just you know quite simply you know get the mind internal no distractions and, and focus on that that connection using your own willpower and volition to make the movements happen to make the muscles contract rather which is a much more proactive approach than this reactive approach of 
again, mimicking motions or increasing the weight to stimulate the muscles. This is about making the weight almost as light as possible to it's just the body, you know. So the reason I've chose these two systems is they cover for me two similar overlapping but different uh, bases that are very foundational and easy to access. One of them, the Sandow system, which is what we're going to start with, is using very light dumbbells and it's just training uh, mechanical actions, going through motions, but instructing the correct or the more accurate muscles to do their job while practicing relaxing the other muscles and telling them not to do the job which they might be used to doing up until now. And then the other approach is the Max Alding muscle control system which has also been done in India by yogis and, and other people have done this. Um, but it's, this for me is the most natural of all of this, um, of the school of biomechanics so far. It aligns with my beliefs that the truth should be simple and it's, it's no equipment whatsoever. It's simply muscle control through mind muscle collection and, and contraction. Program one is going to be Sandow's system. Sandow is known as somewhat the, the godfather of sort of strength or strongman um, training. But when I've dug into it, it appears as though he himself didn't necessarily develop this system. It was actually invented or developed by a professor, Attila. And this is approach, this light dumbbell system is an approach to strength training that they considered the most important part of the strength training. So the lifts they did were just, this is in the, the books that, that I'm reading, the literature, the lifts they did were, were more of an expression of strength, but not necessarily the way we see it as that's the strength training in itself. The, the light dumbbell system and the mind-muscle connection and the muscle control that they had and the contractions they were able to do with light dumbbell, with light weights, is the training that actually developed the strength for them to actually improve on their lifts and then they would go and test their strength with the lifts, which is a complete almost 180 of our modern approach where it's just trying to lift heavier and heavier every single session and doing you know, crazy volume on high weights, whereas they did high volume on very light weights and focus on that internal con connection and contraction and then they were able to express that. And this is just such a paradigm shift in the approach to the body. I'm loving this program so far. I think you're gonna like it as well. Um, I'm gonna leave um, some video links as well within the school so you can check if you wanna do some more research and I'm gonna read some books that uh, lead some links to some books that I've, that I've read as well that if you wanna dig further into it, it'd be great reading for you too. This program is basically going to go over 20 different movements with a light dumbbell with not too many reps, um, but it's on you to, of course, guide, as we said, that 50% that battery rule that you're gonna work on yourself just to get a nice pump but without exhaustion. And there's also gonna be some additional uh, movements as well as you get, as the weeks progress, if you wanna add a few more movements, some things that I've personally added myself because I feel like there's certain body parts which are missed that I wanna hit. I think there's a lot of focus around shoulders and upper body with this, which I do like, you know, and when you look at that, for me, it connects in with the meridian system. They talk about how, you know, the bicep curls helps your respiratory system. And in the, in the meridians, you've got the heart and lungs run through the bicep. So even though I know you might be thinking, Tim, this is just a bodybuilding program. We're just going to like try and be big body. No, this is not about size. If you want that, you might get that. But this is about what's happening internally. This is about feeling good. This is about feeling in control of our body. And it's about health as well. So as we're gently working these lines, the meridian lines in the upper body around the shoulders and all this stuff, we're encouraging the, the internal health as well. That's fully what I see from the Chinese stuff. And this is when I read this stuff and they talk about the health benefits. There's no full on scientific link in, in like the modern approach that you might want to see. But it, anyway, for me, it all ties in. And maybe this is getting too um, hypothetical from my own theory. But uh, hey, give it a go. And uh, I'm sure you will feel healthier, more connected and stronger. So the three keys that I want you to focus on throughout this muscle control module are number one, to be mindful. I want there to be no distractions. It's the first time I'm gonna really request no music, no podcasts, no TV, no someone else in the room that you're conversing with. I would like you to focus, if you wanna follow this properly, focus on the task at hand, be mindful, present, focus, willpower, concentration, all, all those words, mind in the muscle. We're building that mind-muscle connection and if we're not 100% focused on it, it's not gonna build. Number two is to work on relaxing the opposite muscles or the antagonistic muscles that work against the task that we're trying to do. So focus on the muscles that you're instructed to do 
and think about relaxing the other muscles. And you're gonna to have to go slow in the beginning to do this. And I know it might sound airy or like, yeah, when I'm not using a muscle, is it not just relaxed? Well, the more I practice this and what it so it seems is that you can actually send an intention to a muscle to relax. And there is a few more degrees or percentage of relax that can happen when we focus on the muscle. The same way you can tell it to contract, you can go the opposite way and get it to relax. And I think this is something that as we practice, we're gonna get better at and the inverse of the contraction that's happening, we're gonna get better at that to contract as well. Number three, and this is one of the big ahas that I've been seeking almost to read someone else to verify it before I actually committed to it, which is, I know is, is silly, it's like why not just you know, try this anyway, and that is we are nurturing the muscles and we're nourishing the muscles, we're not trying to exhaust the muscles. So we're trying to coax the muscles to that contraction in a gentle way, we're trying to persuade it, we're not trying to pop it, we're not trying to burst anything, this is gentle. So there's this rule about batteries that I only just learned recently, and it's about lead acid batteries, and you should never really let them go below 50% in charge, otherwise it drains the life. You can keep them at 50% and then charge them just before full, and then use them within that range. Their life is a lot longer than if we allow them to get below 50, you know, get them to 25, 10%, and then charge them up to full, and then keep doing that, it shortens their lifespan. And I thought, when I discovered this, I thought that is the perfect metaphor for how we want to train these muscles. So we're not training to exhaustion, we're training, as I've just said, to nourish, to nurture. We don't wanna go below 50%. We don't wanna burn out. We're not trying to tax the muscles in that way. We're thinking of this as a, a different approach. We don't want crazy doms. You might feel a little bit sore, but you might feel it in a, in a nice positive way. The muscles start to wake up. You might feel more of a connection to them but that's the focus here. We're not going below 50% to exhaustion. So what equipment do you need for this module? Well, once again, what I love about this program so far is it's been very minimalistic. We've had one focus per module, piece of light, cheap equipment each time. This time it's just gonna be one light set of dumbbells. For men, I'm gonna request 1.5 kilograms if you can get it, two if that's all you can get. And for women, one kilogram. So that's uh, about three pounds for men, two pounds for women. Additionally, if you've got access to it, you might want a mirror. Uh, it can be useful, although I wouldn't want people to rely on it all the time because then we're taking uh, what could, should be internal cues externally. So I'd say some of the time focus without a mirror, some of the time with a mirror if you've got access to it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to Muscle Control Part A. We're going to be going through Eugene Sandow's system of physical training. Originally, it was done with these spring grip dumbbells. 